And then uh, this isn't really my story. This is a story of someone you got to get on the podcast. Someone, t- someone says day trading is the devil. <laughs> it is. It's, 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 it's really bad for you. I don't sleep very well. I'm fat, um, but I'm making good money. And who's the person that you, I think I should have on the podcast? Uh, Danielle Fong. Is she in Austin? Uh, I think she's still, I think she's up in Canada right now. I think I've encountered her on Twitter. I forget oh, I, why or so what, what are you thinking of? Okay. Okay. So I got to tell this story. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this might have some small inaccuracies, but this is how I got into day trading. Um, this is what lured me in. This, uh, so Danielle Fong, uh, she was the CEO of a, of a, of a alternative energy startup, uh, green energy startup. It was doing uh, grid storage for, for electricity. Uh, in a novel way, but it was in this 2012 kind of era where it was like way too early. Like everyone was investing in green tech. Everyone was going bust. Um, and she went, I think she went bust. Um, like nowadays, if she did her company, like green energy companies are just blowing up. Uh, but I think she was a little too early. Um, but what you have to know about Danielle Fong is uh, she is probably a zero on the agreeableness scale. And probably a 99th percentile on the openness. Sounds like my kind of person. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, just like me too. Like that's literally what I scored when I took Jordan Peterson's big five test. Some people say big five is bullshit, but uh, when I did take the test, I got zero uh, agreeableness and 99th percent uh, openness. Um, I feel like you're not that disagreeable. You're fairly polite. I'm pretty disagreeable. Interesting. Maybe you just uh, like me. So I've never seen your disagreeable yeah. side. But the. Uh, so, so, so the thing is, she was also very, she's a big Elon Musk stan, just a big science background, and she was very early on COVID. Okay. She looked over and saw what was happening in China, and she, uh, she was very concerned. She, about the same time Balaji was, like back in like mm-hmm. January. Um, so she organized uh, this Facebook group called Viral Explorations um, that uh, was really hot early on with like all these Silicon Valley people and scientists and biotech people like analyzing like what we knew about the virus, what we knew of what was going on, tracking the progress before anyone in the mainstream media cared at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she, she figured out that this was going to be really bad. So she flew home to Canada and she had no money. So she sold her parents Chinese restaurant for like a hundred grand. Well, uh, cause she's like, they're going to shut all, down all the restaurants. Where was the restaurant? Somewhere in Canada. So she sold it because, oh, because she knew restaurants would go yeah, under. <laughs> they're like, they're like, they're, they're going to shut down our restaurant. We're wow. going to go out of business. So she sold it. This is way before uh, anything wow. was locked down. So are you friends with her? Uh, I knew her from like Burning Man and stuff. Uh, okay. I think I've met her here and there. Okay. I don't know her super well. Um, hope she doesn't mind me telling the story. Um, I think she's, uh, uh, you know, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty special. And uh, well, you know, the story is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, uh, so she sells the restaurant and she buys uh, a huge quantity of uh, June 21, 2020 spy, uh, 200 strike spy puts. Uh-huh. Uh, and these things cost about 25 bucks each. <clears throat> he, she buys like uh, 25 grand of them. So for people who don't understand, when you buy a put option, it means basically you're betting on something going down. And then when it goes down, you sell the put option and you make money in a nutshell. Yeah. And SPY is the uh, it's basically an index tracking uh, ETF uh, that tracks the S and P five hundred, which is the biggest index. So she's betting on the stock market just crashing to crashing to hell, and she puts twenty five grand on it. Um, but this was in February, and uh, so eight weeks later, she had ten million dollars. No shit. Yeah, dude, badass. <laughs> yeah, uh, That's so awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, but um. But like, wait, many, how much did she spend on 25 grand? She turned 25 grand into 10, $10 million dollars. Damn. Uh, and the, the numbers might not be exactly right, but get them, get something them something like her. that. Wow. But it was something in that magnitude. I'm definitely like going to have her on the podcast like, if she will. It was like 40 X in six weeks. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but the thing is, um, I mean, the story doesn't quite end there. Yeah, please. Uh, which is, um, and, and I'll, I'll skip, I'll skip some of the parts uh, that you'll have to get her to tell on. Cause I don't want, they might be too personal, but they were public. Um, but I'll let her tell them. Um, but the problem is like many principled, low agreeableness, libertarianish people, um, they're really good at spotting a contrarian trade, but really bad at making money off of it. So uh, like Peter Schiff has been a gold bug. He, he was a gold bug in 2011 where he made a ton of money. And then he was a gold bug in 2012 where gold crashed. 
in 2013, in 2014, 2015. He waited like eight years for gold to come back, constantly saying the Federal Reserve is printing money. We're going, gold is going to go up. And it never did. Like, you know, he's just stubborn. And, and she had this idea that like, okay, this, this, this virus is out of control. Like, we don't have a handle on this. This is going to be bad. Our economy is falling apart. The stock market has to keep going down. And um, I mean, all those first several things were true. It, we didn't have it under control. It was really bad. The economy was collapsing. But the stock market, um, you know, the Federal Reserve stepped in to backstop all the corporate debt in America and lend new debt to anyone that needed it. Uh, Congress met and they gave out $2.4 trillion in, in free money. Uh, and um, the stock market started going back up. And I'm pretty sure she lost a big portion of that. And it even doubled down. Uh, and I did this too. So this is how I was following her. I got into this a few weeks after her when I saw she started to have success, uh, which is a fine time to get in. And that's how I made like from, I went from like uh, from like 20 grand to like 180 grand or something, just shorting everything. But then when it started to go back up, I start, kept on shorting, kept on shorting and, and I lost it all. But I'm pretty sure she did cash out Part of that like at the peak when she had all this money she was posting she had formed a vc fund to fund like uh like like viral antiviral therapies and like anyone working on covid like she wanted to fund them um but i think uh the, the thing is that as as um disagreeable and as she is and as uh, instinctively contrarian there was one investment though that she was willing to make um that uh on the long side <laughs> Only one, and that that is Tesla. <laughs> oh, nice. So she took some of her uh, her her mega cash out and, and rolled it into Tesla, uh, which, as we all know, uh, I've been losing money shorting all year. It's oh, up. you've been shorting Tesla. Yeah, it's because it's insane. Tesla's crushing it, um, but a yeah. lot of people think they're overvalued. It's gone up like eight x because she's a huge Elon Musk stand. She wants to be Elon Musk, mm. uh, and um, as far as I know, she didn't have any money really to speak of before this whole thing started. But I. Th probably had some Tesla shares because that's just who she is. Like she doesn't hold it because uh, for like bean counting reasons, she holds it because it's Tesla because wow. <laughs> it's Elon. <laughs> and um, damn. So I wonder what her rate of return has been like, have, since I the beginning no of the virus. I hope basically. she, I hope she has plenty of cash left damn. and she, she made a killing because uh, Tesla is, has gone up like another, um, another like two doublings or so, or maybe three since, since then. Um, yeah, it's crazy. So, uh, so yeah, so that's how I got into day trading, uh, and then so basically, you saw her and you were like, "Whoa, this is crazy! I want to learn this." I'm like, "Why not?"